Hello my dear students here I am ma'am Subarna and I am going to teach you physics hope during this difficult time all of you are fine and healthy during this time I will try my best to help you out in your studies however you need to put a lot of effort in this as well today we will start the chapter motion now if we look around us we find that there are a number of objects which are either at rest or in motion now which objects are in motion or in rest if any object changes its position with passage of time we can consider that object is in motion and if any object does not change its position with the passage of time we can consider is in in rest now our interest in is motion or moving object now let us discuss some examples about moving object all the moving vehicles on a road or the birds flying in the sky fish swimming in water all are the examples of moving object these are the common examples surrounding us we can consider also the examples of the uh, huge bodies like galaxies stars planets etc also we can consider the smallest objects like atom molecules or the electron inside it which are also in motion now we will discuss the types of motion so the motions are of three types linear motion circular motion and vibratory motion so which uh, what is linear motion if a body moves along a straight path then it is we can consider is in linear motion what are the examples a motion of a moving car on a straight road or motion of a ball dropped from the roof of a building now what is circular motion if a body moves around a fixed point then it is in circular motion and the examples are motion of a electric fan motion of a merry go round etc now what is vibratory motion if a body moves to and fro about a fixed point then it is in vibratory motion and the examples are motion of a pendulum of a wall clock motion of a child swinging in a swing etc now we will discuss what is reference point before giving the definition i want to ask you a question what is the distance of your school now immediately the question will come to your mind from where yes if you want to measure any distance from any initial point you have to measure the distance that initial point is the origin and which is known also as reference point so what is reference point reference point is a fixed point or a fixed object with respect to which the given body changes its position next we will discuss rest and motion are relative terms yes relative terms means with respect to which reference point you are describing the motion or rest now let us take one example a bus is moving on a straight path and any observer observer is standing on the bus stop now the with respect to that observer who is standing on the road side with respect to him all the passengers are moving or in motion now if we consider any uh, um, person who is sitting inside the bus with respect to him the driver is at rest and also the other of uh, passengers uh, are also in rest so we can conclude any uh, posi position of rest or motions are relative terms with respect to whom we are describing it now we can consider one uh, another example um, if we consider a moving train or moving bus and any passenger inside it with respect to him any bus any tree or any light post will be in motions with respect to uh, an it motion and along the opposite direction so always we can conclude rest and motions are relative terms next we will discuss there is no absolute rest object in this universe yes 
there is no absolute of raised object in this universe you can um, ask me ma'am uh, the trees these buildings always they are at rest and they are not changing with respect to the time but if we consider the uh, reference frame or reference point outside the earth outside the earth if you observe from the outside from any satellite all the objects uh, um, will uh, appear uh, in motions to you and so you can um, with uh, with respect to our sun is also it at rest but actually the all the stars and planets in our galaxies are also in motion so actually in this universe there is no no object absolutely at rest next we will discuss very important topic uh, scalar and vector quantities so all physical quantities we can def uh, define in two categories uh, scalar and vector quantities which are scalar quantities the quantities which have only magnitude are known as scalar quantity like distance mass volume time speed etc whenever we measure this physical quantity only magnitude is sufficient to describe them means if you are measuring the mass no uh, we you don't need any uh, this uh, direction to describe it uh, so these are the scalar quantities scalar quantity can be positive or zero but scalar quantity can never be negative uh, magnitude now next uh, vector quantity vector quantities are uh, with magnitude and direction examples are displacement velocity acceleration force etc vector quantities can have positive negative or zero values so let us discuss about vector quantities force is a vector quantity whenever you are think about you are uh, pulling someone or pushing someone there must be a direction and also there is a magnitude of you the of the force what you are applying on that person also think about the um, gravitational force gravitational force you know uh, the force applied on you by the earth and we all know the direction of the force is along the center of the earth so the, this force all have magnitude as well as direction also next we will discuss about unit system there are many systems but we will discuss about cgs and si system uh, what is cgs system in cgs system mass will be measured in gram length in centimeter and time is second means c stands for centimeter g for gram and s for second and in si system or mk system mass will be measured in kilogram length will be in meter and uh, time will be in second now we will discuss about motion along a straight line for motion along a straight line we can represent uh, a uh, number line system where origin we will consider as a starting point and the uh, positive direction uh, the object is moving along the positive x axis or positive direction next we will discuss about distance and displacement now this is our most important point of this chapter we are going to start now what is distance the length of the actual path between the initial and the final position of a moving object in the given interval of time i want to emphasize on the point actual path so distance of the actual distance is the actual path what is that now let us consider one example any observer started from the point o and he travel along positive x axis 20 km and he reaches to the point a then again he started and along the same direction he moves to the point b 
and traveling the distance 40 km now what is the distance here distance will be 20 plus 40 that is 60 km now that a person come back to the point a on the same path then what will be the total distance then total distance will be 20 plus 40 plus 40 that is 100 km so whenever we will talk about distance it will be the actual or total path traveled by the ob object now unit of distance is in SI system is meter and in CGS system it is centimeter so whenever we will talk about distance we no need to describe its direction so distance is a scalar quantity now what is displacement displacement is the shortest distance between the initial and the final position of a moving object in the given interval of time in the direction from initial to final position so here two important point is the shortest distance and the direction from the initial to final position now let us consider the same example the observer started from the point o and traveling along east 20 km he reaches a again along the same direction he travels 40 km and reaches point b for this situation the displacement will be uh, 20 plus 40 that is 60 km no problem but if the observer come back to the, uh, the position a then what will be the displacement displacement shortest distance therefore what is the shortest distance here the shortest distance is 20 plus 40 minus 40 why minus 40 he returns 40 km back to its the position a that's why so what is the displacement here displacement will be 20 km from o to a whenever you are describing displacement you have to give the direction from initial to the final position here the observer started from the point o and finally he is at a so the direction will be from o to a so therefore finally the displacement will be 20 km from o to a so to describe the displacement we ha you have to uh, consider the magnitude as well as the direction therefore we can conclude displacement is a vector quantity and what are the units in cgs system the unit is same centimeter and si system it is meter now regarding distance and displacement uh, i want to discuss some important point with you let us consider the first uh, situation displacement of an object may be zero but the distance traveled by the object is never zero can you explain it yes displacement of an object may be zero but the distance traveled by the object is never zero now let us consider one example consider you started from your home you went to the school uh, that time what is the distance that the distance of between the school and your home now again you come back to your home now what is the distance if the distance is d then the distance will the total distance uh, distance from your home uh, to your school is d while you go to the school and again come back to your home the total distance will be 2d but for this situation the displacement will be zero why your starting point was your home but again after few hours you come back again to your home so the initial and the final position is same therefore we can conclude the displacement is zero but the distance is 2d so displacement can be zero but distance traveled by the object is never zero now i am giving you one another point uh, as a homework you just think about this point um, we will discuss this point also in my next class distance traveled by an object is either equal 
or greater than the magnitude of displacement. Distance travelled by an object is either equal or greater than the magnitude of displacement. Now next we will discuss difference between the distance and displacement. So what is distance? Distance is the length of the actual path and displacement is the shortest distance between the initial and the final position. And distance is a scalar quantity but displacement is a vector quantity. This distance can be uh, positive, uh, is always positive but displacement can positive, negative or zero. So this is for today. Now this is for today's class. If you have any doubt regarding today's discussion, you can contact me during the allotted time for you for your clarification. And don't forget to give the attendance before the end of class. Thank you.